Good. Who used this phone last? The girl. She left the connection open so they could hear us. We've got to get her away fast. Halt! Captain America. Either the district attorney and Captain America are one and the same man, or else they're working very closely together. The girl called the DA's office and left the phone open so they could listen to us. Then Captain America arrived. Well, we will fire all of our Captain America in due time. Now we must get ready for the next move. The next move? Yes, against Henley, the petroleum magnate. He also was a member of the Mayan expedition which discredited me. I've sent him an extortion note, which he's sure to take to the district attorney. And we must learn what the DA intends to do about it. So you're to install a radio dictaphone in the district attorney's apartment. In his apartment? If he should find me there... Ah, but he won't. I've arranged to have him come here. Shine, sir? Not today. Yes, Mark? The district attorney has just gone in. Very well. On your way. I'll keep him here long enough for you to finish the job. In the library. Come in. Hello, Doctor. How are you, Mr. Gardner? It was good of you to come. I realize you're a busy man these days. Have a seat. Thank you. I'm very busy, but I knew you must have a good reason for wanting an interview. Thank you, I have. The National Academy of Science has asked me to prepare the material for biographical articles on the members of the Mayan expedition who have been murdered. I'd appreciate it if you look over these notes to make sure I'm not divulging any information to the criminals that might interfere with your plans to arrest them. There are only a few pages. Perhaps you could look them over now. Certainly. I'd be glad to, Doctor. Set it for 20 megacycles and I'll give you a test. Very well. 
Gruber. H1, M3 calling H1. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, we heard it, it's okay. Now get out of there quick. The DJ may be back any minute. Right. Oh, I see. All right, Gail, get a police escort and bring Mr. Henley here. When did he arrive? About ten minutes ago. I've been trying to get you, but your line was busy. What? What's that? I said I tried to get you, but your line was busy. All right. I'll expect you in about 15 minutes. Very good. When Henley arrives, we know exactly what they propose to do. Now, Mr. Henley, what is this about an extortion of They mean business, Gardner. Something's got to be done quickly. Henley, if you value your life, you will obey the following instructions implicitly. Draw $100,000 in currency from your bank and return home with it. Wait there for a telephone that's instructing you as to the exact time and place where the money is to be left. Scarab. How did you receive this? was pushed under my door. Do you intend to pay this money? Of course I intend to pay. It's my life I'm buying. I consider it worth the price. I'll consent on one condition. You ought to remain on the police guard, and Miss Richards will deliver the money. That's satisfactory. Will you try and capture the extortionists when they come for the money? That won't be necessary. We have a specially constructed carrying case for just such an occasion as this. It has a secret compartment containing a radioactive cell keep sending out a signal. By means of triangulation, we can locate the case wherever it is taken. Perhaps to the headquarters of the Scarab himself. I'll take care of the mechanical spy. We'll take every precaution to protect you. But remember, we're probably dealing with a homicidal maniac. You call me at my office as soon as you learn where the money is to be delivered. I will. We'll walk you to the elevator. Now the homicidal maniac will plan a counterattack. Bye. Good luck. Thank you. Tale about a carrying case. I never heard of it. Neither did I. It's a good idea. But you told Mr. Henley. I not only told Henley, I also told the scarab. When you said my phone had been busy, I realized someone had been in the apartment. I searched and found a radio dictograph concealed in the bookcase. Then they think. Just what I want them to think. That we're depending on the phony locator to trace them. So they won't expect us to try any other scheme. So that's it. Yes. And as soon as we learn where to leave the money, I'll start. You go to Henley's, pick up the case, and take it to the location designated.
Calling number three. Calling number three. Okay, come in. The girl came out alone and left the case. I'll get it. Drive the car around to the other entrance. Take this case and drop it down the shaft at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Get your hands up, Maxie. 